that's an easy one. We're done with that though. Is that the jump rope? Yeah. Whenever I skip rope, I can't use these wireless headphones. They fall right out of my ears. So of course, it would be helpful if I could get the rope itself not to fall out of my hands. Finish my protein shake, and then we'll hit this. New name, who this? Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Bull Muscle. For those of you who know me as Beer Battered Ag, yes, I'm going through a rebrand. This seems like a pretty good time to talk about that, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I am a diehard Aggie. We get a little bit more all. So why can't I click all? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Nice. Alright, let's do one more bronze bar. If you adopt the mindset, and this is a quote from Jacob Fisker of Early Retirement Extreme, if you know that guy, 10 points to you. But it's a, it's, it's a quote that I find unbelievably uh, poignant in today's era. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. I'm gonna repeat that. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. That's painful. But yes, my friends, pure protein, as near as makes no difference from raw egg whites. It's disgusting, um, the taste is vile, and it smells, but 100 yeah, my poor roommate has to deal with the farts that come from this, and as you might imagine, they're not they're not pleasant. But let me all right, let me go ahead and walk, knock this bad boy down. Good morning, everybody. Welcome on in. Uh, for some reason, my uh, activity feed is not cooperating. That's why I was on a slight delay here. That little bit of the standard pre-squat uh, gastrointestinal fund. So. Trust me, it's better getting it out of your system than risking something. So we're gonna start. We're gonna be uh, hitting squats today. It's gonna be pretty heavy. It's gonna be a lot of volume, so this is not gonna be an easy day. But it should be a fun one. That's not right about the face here. I can move this. That's not right. sets of squat, five sets of regular back, and eight sets of variations. So that's going to be a bitch and a half. So we best get started. Let's take it very far. The rack at the wrong height. Push that. So the goal today is to be hitting 75% for eight reps five times. Now, 75%, what's on your agenda today? Today, squats, bro. Kyle J. Don, thank you for the first time chat. Welcome on in. Howdy. Uh, 
we're just warming up because five five by eight is gonna be heavy uh, squat volume. We're gonna be hitting it hard. Um, let me go ahead and knock out a warm up set. Obviously, this doesn't count, but I'm not gonna dive into 300 plus weight immediately. That's a recipe for disaster. I know that death isn't enough on these. I'm warming up, sue me. Oh, it's cold in here for my southern ass. Nice and easy, nice and slow. Let's do a couple low lowers. Also make sure you have that exit in case of failure. Oh, no, I got you. Um, these right here, I failed at 400 plus pounds before. Uh, those supports are just tall enough to where, uh, you know, if I fail, I can get out from under. And they're just short enough to where I can still go a little bit below parallel without touching them. I'm just where I want them to be. No, that's, that's smart, you're right. So, the goal is to be uh, doing 75% today. We're on Alex Bromley's 70s power lifter workout regimen. I had to make a few modifications due to the lack of equipment in some areas. But so far, it's been pretty good. Um, so, 75% of, it's supposed to be 75% of your one rep max, but I found that that's not really all that challenging. And we'll, we'll see, maybe today it is. Uh, my max on squat all times 415. So that'd be putting it at 311 pounds at 75%, really it's a range. You go 65 to 70%, 75%. But uh, if I were to do 65%, that's 270. 270 for eight reps is a piece of cake for me. Uh, so not gonna go that that light. Uh, what I really would rather do is instead of using my one rep max, actually I want to try and use my desired one rep max for this bulk cycle, which is closer to 440. So 0.75 of that is 330. And that's what I think I'd like to try today. So I think that's what we're going to start with. So the question is, how do we put, this is 215. All right, yeah, I know what we gotta do. Cool. But first I need to do another warm up set. Again, you gotta warm up a little bit first. I have a home gym, bow flex set, still need a good squat rack. I got this one used for a hundred bucks. Highly recommend it. So you're in the bulk. Oh dude, it's way too early to be coming off a bulk for me. I live in the deep south, so this is like one of two months a year it's actually semi-cold, I wouldn't even call it cold, but for my southern ass it is. Uh, and as such, and when I say cold, I mean highs in the 50s and 60s, so it, it's the deep south, right? Um, as such, I'm going to use that to my advantage and use these two months to bulk. 52 new PB. Woo! Dude, if that's a clean seated bicep curl at 52, you got some fucking pipes, bro. Good for you. All right. I'm gonna do another warm up set. This doesn't count towards the total again. I'm just warming up. This is only 215. And don't worry, the shirt will come off, but it's still too cold. I'm not, I'm not warmed up enough for that yet. There we go. Oh, that 
that's easy. That feels good. That ain't bad. All right. I think out of abundance of precaution, I'm going to start at 315. We'll do a set there. And if it feels good, we'll go for 330. I'd rather not do something stupid. I know. The squat rack sounds rickety as hell, but I promise you, that's a lot more stable than it sounds. It's squeaky, it's rickety, but it gets the job done. Look, this is called a 70s power lifter program, and my workout equipment might as well date from the disco era. Keep it old fashioned, keep it high volume, and just put in the fucking work, you know? Oh, that's much better. Woo! All right. So first sets of 315. Um, the other thing I'm going to do today is calves. So the way I usually do this is I superset calves um, on my squat sets. So like that's one. It calls for leg extensions. Um, but you know, obviously. This is a home gym. I don't fucking have a leg extension machine. We should set up a throne for your bowl. I have one. Nobody uses it. Not all peaches grow on trees, not all apples fall to the ground. I don't know what that means, but okay. I've done squats from a squat rack for a while. Tore a rotator when I was 190 pounds at 375. Squat to Swift Smith machine. Arm got caught under on a bale. See, this is why. Okay. This is a pet peeve of mine. First off, Smith machines are booty. If you, can, if you have access to a proper barbell squat, the only thing you should be doing on a Smith machine are sissy squats. Uh, I don't believe in the Smith machine. I believe the Smith machine is less effective than a barbell because you don't have control, you don't have balance. Smith machines, it's right, it's a bit like using one of those hammer strength chest presses instead of an actual bench. It's fine, it's better than nothing, but it's not as effective as a barbell. It's just, it's not. I'm very, I'm very old fashioned when it comes to my workouts. Nothing beats time under a fucking squat rack. Not like the Smith machine anymore either. Yeah, it's on my lake tree. Um, but yeah, no, hardly anybody ever uses my throne. I even have a reward set up for it. I just, I just don't, I don't advertise all that tip me, gift me shit. Like it's there if people want to have it, but that's not the point of this channel. Stabilizers don't, exactly, all the little, all the mini muscles that help provide balance, that help, all the, it's all the auxiliary stuff that doesn't get hit on a Smith machine or on a machine press. They're good auxiliary pieces of equipment, but do not treat them as a substitute for the real fucking thing. Okay, I'll put it this way. The Smith machine is the, the Smith machine is the tofu of exercise equipment. It's not necessarily a bad thing, and it's certainly better than having no protein in your diet, but you're going to be missing shit that you would get uh, with something like meat. And certainly, uh, to stretch this metaphor a bit further, or this simile a bit further, uh, the Smith machine is an incomplete exercise in the same way that tofu is an incomplete protein. But if you supplement it with, say, dumbbells, or rice, right, you're gonna get a complete range of protein. So it's it's stuff like that. Body muscle man, Kuro, walk him on in. All right. Enough dicking around. So this is 315. We're gonna go for a set of eight here. Uh, and then we're gonna hit calves. 
Depending on how this feels, I'm going to go up further. This is 75% roughly, a little bit more actually. It's like 76%, 77%. Uh, of my current max, which is 415 pounds. Um, I believe I actually have a clip of that on my channel. I failed on 420. Uh, but we're going for eight reps, so I'm gonna just lock in, hit this. All right. Let's go. Strong like bull. And this. Here, so I can sort of track how much time I spend under the barbell because that's actually really useful. The amount of time you spend under the barbell is good for you. Um, the other thing I ought to do is back you guys up just a touch more and adjust the camera just a minute. Hey, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the bowl. Vice President Strongly do a Roni workout 80 hammers non stop 25. That is, um, that's not a bad approach. I would say. Be wary of just how much volume you're doing with your biceps. You can get tendonitis in the elbow if you go too, too far on the volume. I would, I would, my personal recommendation is maybe cut the volume a bit and add a little bit more weight. Uh, but if it's working for you, hey, your mileage may vary. You may have really strong tendons and ligaments in your elbow and you don't have to worry about that. All right, first set. This should go easy. If it doesn't, well, it's going to be a much harder day than I expected. coming in a bit that's not good that's not bad that felt pretty good Not bad. Sorry, I was writing it down. Give me a sec. That was 315. Felt pretty good. Now, you may notice I'm doing a low bar back squat. Um, this is primarily because I'm six foot three and my body physiology lends itself much more natural to that. So, okay. The 315, that felt pretty solid, I think. We're gonna go up to 325 on this set. It didn't feel bad. Um, I think I'm also gonna give myself a little platform uh, for the back heels. This is not a cheat. As far as I'm aware, this is perfectly okay to do. Um, basically, because I'm fucking tight with my money, I have knockoff Chuck Taylors on, and they're fine, but for a guy my size, 
uh, guy with my leg and femur length, squat shoes would be really useful. However, because of that fucking aforementioned laziness, or rather, I gotta catch my breath, holy shit. Uh, it's catching up with me now. The trouble is trying to talk and do this, it's always a bitch. Um, let's go Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin next. Um, so, probably hit 350 on for three, oh, easy. At least three, probably closer to five or six. Um, cause this is going to be 325. If I can hit 325 for eight, cause I know I've hit 365 for five before. Um, I do single leg calf raises with one dumbbell. That's not a bad way to do it. Um, so no, so these, these chucks work pretty well for lifting. I don't like lifting barefoot. Also, it's pretty cold in my un unheated air, un air conditioned garage. So I'm not going to go barefoot until I hit lunges cause uh, lunges bust these shoes open. I don't really want to do that either. So, uh, what these, I'll show them, right? What those little 10 pound plates do, it's only about a three quarters of an inch off the ground. I'm going to put my heels on those. When I do, it's going to give me just a little bit of a lift on the heels, which is going to allow my back to remain more vertical, put a lot more pressure on my quads, really more accurately hit. Uh, what I'm looking to hit in squats instead of having to, you know, uh, put my chest a bit further down the way I would on a flat squat. Now, I don't do this when I'm maxing, just on principle. Eh, sometimes I do. That's not true. Um, I don't know. I may invest in squat shoes at some point. I haven't done it yet. I've been waiting for the USPS to send me a welcome message. Harsh. Fair, but, but, but harsh. Uh, I'm not, I'm not always the fastest on the old uptick here. So we got a set of eight. This should be a little bit tougher, but I should have no problem eight repping this. If I lock in, prep myself for it. The set of 315 felt pretty easy, so. I'll probably take my shirt off after the next set, but. Not this one. Yeah. Um, if you have uh, taller femurs, if you have longer femurs, longer legs in general, and you found you find that you have limited ankle flexion. So ankle flexion is the an the angle at which your foot makes with your shin. How far forward can your knees travel over your feet uh, while staying stable? If you find that you're somewhat lacking in that because you're either tall or you're just not that well trained in it, uh, you can elevate your heels slightly. I mean, you just go, go look at literally anybody who does squats like professionally. They're all wearing squat shoes for a reason. It helps. Uh, some people say it's cheating. I think that's kind of stupid. The weight is still going down and up. Uh, it's the same amount of work as being done from a physics perspective. You're simply changing the angle at which your feet are oriented to the ground. I don't think that's cheating. Again, the, the weight's going up, the weight's going down. The form shouldn't change. If anything, when you're doing this, the form should get better. So, you should have no issue with that. Single leg squats, regular squats, Romanians today. That's a lot of work on your uh, posterior chain. Well done. I very seldom do squats and deadlifts on the same day. That's too much on my central nervous system. So not to say that I can't do it. It's I prefer not to. Um, and on this uh, workout regimen, I'm not supposed to anyway. Uh, we do squat, press, bench, de or squat, press, deadlift, bench in that order. Uh, so this is the first day of the third week of the second wave, which is our eight rep wave. All right, now I need to lock in. Stop talking. Not to cry. Oh. Fart. Let's go. We got. 
got this. It's not bad. We'll keep the tens there. I like it. All right, felt pretty solid, it was not easy, but I think for at least one set we can try 330. separator pulls. No, no. I'll wait for the next one. What's your bench at? So my bench fell off a little bit in 2023. All time PR I hit last February at the end of my 2022 slash early 2023 bulk. I hit that at 355. Um, when I tested my max at the beginning of 70s Powerlifter, it was at 335. So pick whichever number you think uh, is more reasonable. But somewhere north of 315 is what I would say. A bench is probably my strongest summer recovering bench, bro. Uh, that goes all the way back to high school. Bench suffers because of the old rotator tear. It would, that makes sense. Um, similarly, I had some high ankle injuries in high school for football. And as such, I think my squat and deadlift are not proportionally where they are to my upper body. Now I've done a lot to overcome that. I mean, in recent years, my squat and deadlift have come up a lot. But, you know, if my maxes are 355, 415, 455, that means I'm bench heavy. Top heavy, excuse me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for the third set. What position did you play? I was an offensive lineman. I know I don't quite look like it now. I'm a bit too skinny for that, but you know, we believe it or not. So I played uh, D end and tight end through to about senior year. 
uh, when I moved to Maryland, and Maryland is not a powerhouse football state. Uh, as such, I was one of the bigger guys on the team, and so they moved me to offensive tackle. I was not much for a run blocker at the time. My squat was pretty pitiful, but my bench was pretty strong, so I got really good at holding, or rather, getting away with holding. All right. I'm gonna need a minute. Playing the school with Matt McGloin, that's cool. Um, I think the, I think there was two guys who went D1 from my class year. One went to, predictably, Maryland. The other, I think, went to Kansas State. The toughest competition I ever saw was sophomore and junior year in Nebraska. Those are some big fucking boys. That's not fun when you're a 15 year old 160 pound center. Because uh, they had me play center because I actually was pretty decent at shotgun snapping because I got big hands. Uh, that's not fun. Put it that way. All right. Thanks very much, man. Good to see you. If you want more content of mine, you want to hang out uh, off hours. Uh, type in exclamation mark Discord. Let's check out my Discord. Ooh. Okay, feel a little bit of that super squats nausea. That's not a good sign. We're only on a third set. <laughs> that's 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 not ideal. It's all right. We're gonna be fine. Gonna cool it. Get more water. Suck myself up and fucking hit this. Went to Dallas for work. There were so many big guys there. I like that. Big in many ways. They don't call it the big D for nothing, right? <laughs> By the way, uh, Big Game Mikey, you'll be interested in knowing this. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about housing prices and the housing crisis and all of that. Uh, new statistics just came out. It said the state with the highest average house size is Utah with 2,800 square feet on average. Now look, I get the Mormon household complexes skew that a bit, but I think the problem here uh, might not be BlackRock. The, the, the problem here might be consumer demand. Um, look, when the average is a 2,800 square foot home, that's going to require double the resources of say the average home in New York, which is 1,400 square foot. Uh, and that's New York State, not just New York City, but, you know, that's going to require, it's literally double the house, it's going to be double the resources, it's going to require near double the land unless you want a fucking McMansion, uh, and, and very quickly you can figure out why Utah is having a housing crisis right now. And Cito, thank you very much for the follow, dumbass. <laughs> well, what, what Utah needs is more mixed-use housing. I wouldn't even say tiny homes. I mean, tiny homes are great. Um, I, I would just say more, how about more common sense size houses? Look, if a 1200 square foot home was big enough in 1950, when house, when housing family sizes, even in Utah were bigger, uh, how, wh wh why are we, why are we more than double that in the 21st century? It doesn't make sense. I did mention that in our combo to be fair. Yeah. Well, I bring it up because you're talking about this in the stocks channel. Everybody was, somebody was getting on the case of BlackRock for being the reason housing prices have spiked. No, that's not the reason. Now, it definitely hasn't helped, but the, the fraction of homes that, you know, big investment firms are buying up does not compare to the underlying demand problem. The problem is Americans want 3,000 square feet of house for 1,500 square foot of price, and that doesn't work. It's the same, it, it, it's got the same whiff to me of people bitching about gas prices while filling up their V8 Chevy Tahoe. Some of this is on the consumer. E-buyers, yeah, or I-buyers I've seen. Okay, let me, let me psych up, we got another set to do here.
you know, Redfin and other, other brokerages. But even then, there, there's a chart, uh, I think EMB posted it in, in the stocks channel that shows just how small a fraction of total housing stock that is. Uh, it's, it's not that much. The other, so the, the, the two root causes I would say are um, that isn't really one of them. To me, it's in the 1980s, 1990s, and 2000s, before the housing crash of 2008, Americans simply did not want smaller homes. Everybody wanted a McMansion. Everybody wanted a bigger house with more land and more space out in the suburbs. So no new small houses got built basically from about 1980 all the way to 2008. Then the 2008 housing crisis crashed, right? As a result, pretty much all construction stopped in 2008. Uh, construction more or less went down the entire, it went down the tubes uh, in, in, in the 08 crash. And as a result, there's a huge missing chunk of new housing stock that would have otherwise been built from say about 2008 to 2013. It's just, it's missing, it's not there. Like if you look at when houses houses are built, very very few you will find from those years, and there's a reason for that. Hopefully we're in for a correction. I think we are. Um, I don't think it'll be in 2024 though. I think it'll be 2025, 2026. Uh, I think the current administration will do whatever it takes to avoid any bad economic outcomes for political expediency until the election is over. So if there's going to be a correction, it won't be in 2024. I strongly recommend renting until the next correction. Uh, unless you live in an area like I do, the rural deep south where house prices are still cheap. All right. There's actually a rent versus buy indicator. I believe The Economist does this uh, that shows which zip codes, or not zip codes, counties, you're better off renting in versus better off buying in. And it's very telling how the only parts of the country anymore where you're still better off buying are most of the old Rust Belt and most of the deep south. All right, let's do this. Uh, and not Florida. Uh, although, unless you're fucking brain dead, don't buy housing in Florida. Climate change is gonna wreck that state. Let's go. Right. Strong like both, baby, here we go. Sir. Later, Paul. Wow. 
Whoa, balance. Might be a little bit of August. Criminal, good to see you. Do not feel like functioning today. Get the fuck up. Don't make excuses for yourself. Take action. Remember, decisions form actions, actions form habits, habits form values, values form ethos. squats. I'm stretching out my chest. It's about building a rib cage and forcing oxygen in. It's called the Raider pole. You take a pole or some other vertical object, grab on about six inches above your eyesight level with your lower hand and pull down. And if you're doing it right, you'll feel pain in your sternum, right around your breastbone, right here. That's forcing your rib cage to grow. Uh, it's very painful to superset after a squat set, but it's unbelievably effective. Uh, I've done a short about it. I know it's in here, but I just whew, got a few more of those to do. Um, I think I'm gonna have you guys form check me on the next one. Yeah. All right, so if I, why does it look like I can do this, right? That's because I've been stretching out my rib cage with the Raider pull, with dumbbell pullovers after doing squats. So when you're squatting, doing it properly, you should be breathing like a steam locomotive by your last few stat, sets, which is what I'm doing there. Let's see who we want next. Let's go. We're gonna do Metallica. No, I'm not feeling fade to black. Feeling I just ride the lightning is always pretty good. Let's do ride the lightning. Oh my back. We'll feel that pop. Stretching out feels really nice. All right. You got two more sets of eight. Um, I'm gonna do this one flat footed from my own knowledge and edification. No, no, I'm gonna keep these on. I'll probably do the last one flat footed. Um, so on this, the, the goal is going to be really checking depth. Um, obviously I would appreciate y'all, uh, looking at my sets and, or sorry, looking at each rep, telling me, you know, count how many I go deep enough on. When I say deep enough, I mean parallel. So my femur should be parallel to the ground, crease of the hips should be at the top of the kneecaps. Uh, I don't really want to go any less deep than that. <sighs> All right. Got this only our fourth set. That's tough. Set myself up for this, we'll hit it. 
<sighs> five by eight's a lot, and then the variations are not going to make this any easier. Guys over here. All right, that shows pretty good. The key is looking for depth here. There is an emaciated German Shepherd just fucking around outside. My house, that's a stray. Nope, not interested at all. I ain't touching that thing with a 10 foot pole. That poor thing, it's gonna be dead in a month or two. But if you see it, that means it's just gonna come back. Don't want that either. Son of a bitch. All right, where was I? All right, lock in, focus. Show my ball. Again, please, 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 depth check me. Let's go, let's do this. Not good. I feel my hips shift up. Last rep is Garbo. How's the death?
Nice. The form went a bit worse. Was it just on the last rep where the form looked bad? Or was it on more than the last rep? I could feel my hips tilt up on the last rep, but I don't know if every rep was like that. If it was, yeah, you're right. I need to correct that. Probably need to go down weight for the fifth set. Just fine. Oh wait, I forgot your calves. You arch your back slightly when going up. Yeah, the last one I felt it the most. I didn't feel it on the previous two, um, but obviously right. So on your last sets on an intense workout, you see a little form break, but it's something I need to definitely clamp down on. Death is at least, so the death is good. That's, that's good. Um, but yeah. No, so that means I'm getting pelvic tilt, I think is what it's called, where, right, you come down and you, you start like this and then up instead of up. That's probably a sign I need to go down weight and swallow my pride a bit. So I'll do that. We'll take uh, 15 off, go back down to 315 for a final set. So thank you. Uh, Talio. Talio, was that you? Yeah, it was. And so if that's happening, now, on the last rep, right, if it's happening, if that's happening on your absolute last rep, that's okay, right? If you're pushing it to your max, a little bit of form break is probably going to be happening on that last rep. But any more than that, if you're getting into the, part, the, uh, the point of ego lifting, compromising form uh, for numbers, and that's not smart. So thank you for telling me. Um, I think today I'm going to stick to having the, uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to go flat foot. I need to stay good at that in case the time arises ready to squat and I don't have that available. I'm pretty happy with that though. I mean, eight went up. I think that was eight reps. I may have accidentally miscounted and gotten nine there. Um, but I know at least eight reps went up there. And it felt, in terms of getting the weight up, ramming it back up, it didn't feel like I was hitting a sticking point or anything like that, which is a good sign. That's, just, that's what you want. But no, if I'm seeing hip tilt, that's bad. Don't want to be doing that. So we'll go with 315 for our final set. Well, yeah, I was a little Black Sabbath. So I'm going to side myself up. We got one more set on squats. Then we move to the variations. And today we've got a lot of volume there. So we're going to do wide squat. Before going any further, I'm going to figure out what set I want to do with that. Um, let's see. Last day we did squat was 
When is this really the first squat set of the year? Oh my goodness, it is. Okay, well that's neat. Uh, we did three by eight at 240. I think uh, if we're gonna have to do four by eight, I think 240 is just fine to start with. Um, we're doing Right, we're doing lots and lots of volume today, so I think four by eight uh, is gonna be enough of a challenge in terms of volume to where we don't need to go up weight today. Sticking at 240, which is what we did uh, in our previous workout at four, three, and three, it's gonna be plenty difficult already. So 240 seems good. Uh, that's not terrible. That's, I think, very manageable for a wide grip or for a wide stance squat. Y'all see me do the wide stance squat now. I got a comment last time that I had my knees buckling in when I'm doing wide stance. So it's not really possible, like when I, if, I'm, if I'm at a stance this wide, it's not really possible to keep my knees like out here. If I'm doing this, I can feel my ankles twisting off the ground. Like I feel not pleasant stretch right on the inside of my groin. I can't point to it obviously much more detailed than that for uh, TOS reasons, but uh, as a result, you know, some people are saying, you know, your knees are slightly tracking inward of uh, your toes, and yes, that's not ideal, but there's not a ton I can really do about that on a wide grip stance or a wide stance squat. Um, if if y'all have suggestions on how to get more flexible, uh, you know, those, I think those are your ah. Uh, Abductors? Adductors is one of those two. Um, I'm all ears, but you know, I, I can't, I can't squat like this. Uh, my, 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 my ligaments and tendons are not flexible enough to do that. I wish they were, they are not. So, uh, I will happily solicit advice from chat on that one. You know, the body physiology will make things a bit tougher. Now, I was also looking at the claimed, you know, knees buckling valgus. I didn't see a ton when I was looking at the clips. Yeah, it might have been tracking a tiny bit inside of my toes, but again, it's not physiologically possible for me to track it outside of my toes on wide, on, on such a wide stance of canted feet. And right, if I don't cant my feet, that's buckle city right there. That's right. Even just doing, if I, if I don't camp my feet and I go for a really wide squat, just like this, right, I'm already buckling. Like, just, just on, like, with no weight on my back at all. It just doesn't work. Is doing that wide of a squat stance really necessary? For this it is. Um, the whole point of a wide stance is that you're, okay, so why am I doing wide squats and front squats at all? This is getting into the philosophy of what the 70s power, built, power lifter workout is. 70s power lifter workout is high volume. What you do is you do your main sets, so that's bench, squat, deadlift, and press. Then you do variations on that movement. So a wide bench press, incline bench press, uh, wide squat, front squat, uh, Romanian deadlift, uh, Jefferson deadlift, good mornings, um, you know, wide grip press, behind the neck press, stuff like that, right? Push press, stuff, stuff of that nature. And when you do that, you're getting a lot of that solid result. Uh, what, you're, what you're doing, this is the bodybuilding, the, the volumizing sets of it. The idea is that you're putting yourself in a mechanical disadvantage with these variations. All these variations are intended to be at lower weight than your main movement. But because you've already done the main movement, your muscles are already torn up in terms of, you know, pure firing off explosiveness. But by doing, putting them at a further mechanical disadvantage, you're really tearing them up by forcing them to do work at lighter weight, but at a greater mechanical disadvantage. That's, that's the general idea. I'm not saying it particularly eloquently right now, but in my defense, this is not lightweight. Now, I'll lie to myself and say that it is while I'm psyching myself up to, but it's 315 pounds. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Most people would not consider that lightweight. Okay, fine. I guess you're if you're a college, you know, football athlete, sure. 315 is peanuts to you, but come on now. Ain't nobody on my channel hitting this. Uh, you know, for sets of 20 or sets of 25. So is it necessary? No. Is it what the program is telling me to do? Yes. Um, but there are benefits to there are benefits to forcing your body to work at a mechanical disadvantage. Uh, take front squats. Uh, front squats, another example is the sissy squat. Uh, Sam Sulik, who is blown up on all the social media I don't use, uh, does these. Uh, they're, the guy who was super big on sissy squats in particular was uh, Tom Platts, the quad father. Uh, because if you ever go look at Tom Platts, he was a heavy lifter in the 80s. If you ever look at his quads, they look like something superhuman. And he probably was taking rocket fuel back in the day, but he had this intense quad workout and sissy squats kind of work the same way as uh, front squats do. They put a lot of mechanical disadvantage in putting the weight out in front of you, which forces quad drive. Uh, that's the idea. Anyway. Huh. Alright, I'm gonna psych myself up. I'm going so fucking slow today, even on my own standards. But it's alright. Alright, we're just going for eight here. Six. Come on. Yes, sir. All easy. How's the form?
Come on. Thanks, Jay Guy. Carose, thank you on in. Dr. Whittle's good to see you. Well, that was our last squat set. It looked pretty solid. It's 315. Doing a D rack. Now I'm moving on the front. Trying to pick up the pace a little bit. I completely missed it. I'm so sorry. Um, I get like that sometimes. What's up? Early morning workout. Uh, not too early. It's like 10 a.m. here. Um, hang on. It was strong. Thank you for the lurk. Uh, so we did sets at 3:15. 325, 330, 330 again, and 315. So that's between 140 and 150 for eight reps at five sets. Um, I would call that an RPE, maybe seven or eight. Definitely hard. If I really gassed it, I could have gotten two or three more reps a piece. Um, but you know, if you do an RPE 10, you're not doing any other sets after that. Um, I'll put it this way, super squats is an RPE 10. Uh, if you're, if you're not barely able to function after that 20 rep set, you were loafing. So I very seldom do RPE 10 stuff because it's just really, really taxing on your nervous system. Uh, the people who go to failure every set, uh, I would say they're risking injury. Am I bulking? Yes, I am. Can't tell by the pot belly yet. Nah, don't worry, the abs will come back summertime. Okay, so now we've got a wide stance squat. Um, the idea here is lower weight, but mechanical disadvantage. So by wide squatting, uh, we're forcing a little bit of a different variation on the normal deep knee bend. Nobody fucking likes squats. You gotta do them anyway. That's what's happening here. 44 degrees Fahrenheit, so yeah, it's about right. Um, is it warm in here? No. Does it feel good? Yes. <laughs> the British are here. Now, yeah, I have a couple, uh, I have a couple blokes and a couple, what's the British word for, is it ladies? I mean, because I know like in Australia they got, you know, bogans and sheilas or whatever. Uh, how many bulk cut cycles do you suggest a year? No more than one a piece usually. Um, I do mine seasonally, right? Last maybe? Last is Scottish, I feel like. Um, no, I appreciate I was just listening to Black Sabbath, so I said thank you to the UK for them. Those wonderful four boys from Birmingham. Uh, it's, you know, I will appreciate this about Birmingham. 
Birmingham, England and Birmingham, Alabama have some shocking similarities in terms of how depressing parts of them are to live in. Uh, you are like a fat cut ball. Hey, getting that marbling right now, that's the joke. Um, started at 205 pounds, that's uh, 95-ish kilos. Maybe a little bit less, 93, 94. Uh, the goal is to be at around 235 to 240 by the end of February. So I got seven more weeks uh, to get to that point. Yeah, eight weeks to get to that point. I'm right now floating. I think today I weighed in at 222. So I'm kind of, I'm about on schedule. Um, my bulk has not been very clean up to this point, which is natural. It's Christmas. You're going to get pies and cookies and shit. And it's just, it, it is what it is. I'm not going to be a Grinch. I'm not going to say no to everything I get offered. That's just dumb. But, uh, you know, New Year, try to tighten up a little bit. Still put in lots and lots of calories, but make them better calories. Um, Bogans or Hicks? Yeah, Bogans are my kind of people. Bogans Australian, uh, in particular. No, Bogans are, uh, Bogans are proof that Australia is just British Texas, and I love it. Only thing I wish the Aussies hadn't done is fucked up their gun laws, but... I get it, it's a different culture. Look like a fat cunt. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm bulking though. Uh, the bulk's gonna continue through to the end of February. I'm gonna probably maintain around, uh, maintain around 235 to 240 through March. Let my body get adjusted to that. Test my maxes that month, maybe do a super squats workout or two, just because I fucking ate myself. Uh, and then we'll, we'll begin the cut cycle. It's gonna be a long cut this year, probably 25 pounds, get back down to ideally 210, but still a really nice and low body fat percentage, really look fucking shredded, hopefully have a little bit more muscle on me. Um, sounds good, is it Sheila's and Bogan's? Well, I don't know what the term is then for, is it Bruce for Australians? I, I don't know. I've also heard Pommies, Limeys, and Nigels for, for, for terms for Brits. But again, those are all, those are all male. Um, I, I've never, I don't know. Limeys is cool. I actually like Limeys because the British are, you know, the, the old, you know, this rule of Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. So Britain has historically been known for its Navy because it's an island nation. Well, why are they called Limeys? The, they're called Limeys because in the British Navy uh, for a long time, Sailors were prescribed limes because limes kept scurvy away. Uh, and see, I, I don't think, I don't think, I wouldn't call it uh, derogatory. I actually think it's really interesting. This is why they're called limeys is because the British, the British are a nation of sailors. Always have been. Uh, pretty much since like the 16th century. Always will be because they're an island nation. Uh, of course, limes contain citric acid. What does citric acid do if not treated? It rots your teeth, uh, which is where another famous British stereotype comes from. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, anyway. Now, look, look, we can deal in stereotypes. I'm a fat redneck who eats too many cheeseburgers and owns too many guns, right? I'm from the South. If we're gonna, we're gonna go with stereotypes. Um, and if we're going to go with other stereotypes, uh, big gay Mikey is in the reverse closet and therefore, because he was from Utah is secretly a Mormon who wants eight wives there. Let's, let's go with stereotypes here. <laughs> he's, he's, he's closet ungay and your closet straight. That's a true power. <laughs> Hello, governor. All right, let's go. This is wide grip uh, squat, or a wide stance squat, excuse me. We Brits don't even know this term. What, y'all don't know limey? Huh. I've heard limeys before. I think it's a great, like, I would take that as a term of endearment because it means y'all are prolific sailors, which y'all are. The British Navy is historically one of the best in the world, if not the best. I think there's one that might be better. Duh. But, you know. They'll certainly kick the ass of the Russian fleet, put it that way. 
I need to go down way. <sighs> this is supposed to be RPE six to nine. That felt like an RPE eight or nine, but I don't feel like I'm getting deep enough. I never said limey bastards, I said limey. I mean, hey, fair enough. I mean, look, all right, for those of you who don't know, right, I live in the state that started in the Civil War and, ended, and live in the country that ended the Civil War. <laughs> um, that was 240. Knees weren't very happy with that, so I think I'm going to play it safe here. Um, try. Uh, let's just go to 235 for now. Try that for a second so that's see how it feels. How were... How was my depth on those? Was I hitting... I mean, I know it's hard to tell from this perspective. Uh, exactly, but was I somewhere near a parallel? I should be. Jay Guy, thanks for the lurk. What's worth, I am 100% uh, American. The only foreigner I got in me is my grandmother immigrated from Germany in 1948. And she considered herself an American, as she should. God bless the melting pot. Get your salad bowl analogy out of here. All right, here we go. Oh, 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 that's good. That is painful.
We got two more sets of that, Jesus Christ. And then four sets of fronts, holy shit. Hey, we got a follow. Uh, Jay, thanks for the work. Twisted Ghouls, welcome on in. Thanks for the fall. Welcome to the bullpen. Whoa. I missed the bench. Thank you for this man grunts on stream. I'm here for it. Uh, you and about 75% of my audience. Like, I know why you are here. Um, hey, monkey. I'm guessing Twitch unfollowed you for some silly reason and now you're coming back because I've seen you around. Thanks for the refollow. Um, which does that from time to time. It'll randomly unfollow me from people. I never clicked unfollow on. It's annoying. So we got two more sets of wide stance squats, then four sets of, sets of front squats, and then four lunges. In theory, you're supposed to do, so the workout says, uh, the workout plan is four sets of lunges and then four sets of leg extensions. Instead, I think I'm doing, gonna do uh, calves, you know, these pullovers and call it a day. Um, I don't think I need to, um, new account different spelling, gotcha. Uh, I don't think I need to, uh, Substitute for leg extensions. I think the calves are good enough. Uh, you know, it would normally be I would do Bulgarians, but uh, the amount of effort I'm having to put in to hit all this squat uh, volume already, I'm not sure that extra set is necessary there. And it tells me not to do cat, or it doesn't say to do calves anyway. So I reckon I'm substituting leg extensions for calves, which I know isn't a parallel, but I'm also doing pullovers, which uh, the workout doesn't say to do. So I'm modifying it some to fit my uh, circumstances. It's fine, you can do that. Maybe I'll do Bulgarians if my knees are filling up to it, but I don't know. That's gonna be a, whole, that's gonna be a tough ask. So we're gonna be doing four by 12, God. Let's see, so 13, 18. 24, 28. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. But if I am going to do that, I need to speed the fuck up. Bullet. So, Twisted, just going to tell you now, um, I get why that's, I get that's why you're here. Um, and that's okay. Uh, just remember, the one rule I have in my chat is don't say shit that'll get me kicked off of Twitch. Alright? Simple as. That's a fair thing for me to expect of y'all. Otherwise, go nuts. Thankfully, um, we've got... Thankfully, we've got the 18 plus sticker on, and as far as a bulge is concerned, look. And, and this is me almost telling this to Twitch more than telling it to my audience. There's certain things, like... Unless I want to become a real-life human Ken doll, uh, there's not a lot I can do to correct this. Uh, you know, it's, it's 45 degrees in here. That's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. That's like 8 degrees Celsius. And, you know, so supposedly I'd be going like a scared turtle. There's just not that much I can do. Um, I've gotten punished. Uh, I've actually gotten suspended uh, from Twitch for just this. And it's, it's really annoying because, again, what, what do you want me to do, right? You know, unless you want me to wear, that's the thing, I don't even have, I can wear like the tightest, like I, I can wear, you know, it, it, I'm not going to wear underwear that put my natural anatomy in a place it shouldn't be when I'm doing squats of all things. Uh, 
because <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just a good way to get myself hurt. I, I don't really want to give myself a hernia. Uh, so deal with it, Twitch. That's, that's, my, that's my advice. Like, it's very obvious, you know, I'm working out here. I'm not trying, this is not, whatever. Twitch just doesn't like health fitness, fitness and health streamers in general. Um, because Twitch can't market uh, video games to the audience because that's not what we're doing here. I'm going out and telling you to pump iron and touch grass. Twitch can't really advertise iron and grass on its, you know, the, the sponsors aren't there for that. Which is funny, you'd think, you know, maybe Amazon, who owns Twitch anyway, might say, oh yeah, you know, I can say, oh, I got this wonderful, cool product, you know, this kettlebell, I got this off of Amazon, you know, you could work something in like that, but I don't think, I think the San Francisco Soy Boys who run Twitch uh, would much rather everybody go in, play video games, and hide their toxic masculinity, so to speak. There is a certain subset of people uh, in the online sphere who think lifting weights is toxic masculinity, which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Lifting weights isn't just for men. Lifting weights isn't toxic. In fact, if anything, it makes you a far better human being. The virus is how the streams and girls and got banned in fleets. Yeah, that's why I did nothing over that whole brouhaha, except for give my audience a poll. Uh, that, I saw that, I'm like, that's bait. That's bait. Now, if you want more explicit content, that may, that may come in the future, but there's also a limit as to how far I can take that because of my day job. Look, I'm a nuclear engineer. I get monitored by my day job. It is what it is. All right. Ooh, let's go, let's go. That wasn't deep enough, come on. One more, one more on wife. Not bad. Husband near your head, any head rubs recently? That doctor was giving me one or two. You're talking about this head. Who needs to change the med again? Other streamers have done worse. Oh, this is 100% based on two things. One, women get away with a lot more than men, on average. Not everyone. But look, there's a reason Amaranth is so popular, and it's not her content. Like, it's not, it's not her, it's not the intellectual level of discourse on her channel. I'm not hating on Amaranth, but she's the poster child for what you can get away with if you're a good-looking woman on Twitch. Men don't quite get that same level of treatment unless they're bringing in big audience numbers. That's the other thing. If you're a partner and you're bringing in a thousand viewers every time you go live, Twitch will put, Twitch puts the kid gloves on you because you're, you're making them lots of money from ads. How many of your coworkers say nuclear? Oh, that's a pet peeve of mine. Unfortunately, far too many because I live in the deep south. Oh, that pisses me off so bad. It's fucking nuclear. Learn to say it right. One of our dumbest presidents was the one, the worst president in the last 100 years is the one who started saying nuclear. And instead of mocking him for it, the country started copying him. I don't like the, I, I do not like the junior Bush at all. I think he was the worst president of the last 100 years. Probably since Wilson. XQC isn't in the, I don't know who XQC is. Why'd you give up your stash? Eh. I don't know, I got bored with it. I think the Mohawk is distinctive enough. I think some of my audience, the stash was controversial. Half my audience loved it, half my audience hated it. We got a hundred million dollar contract with Kick. That's funny to me. And that's the other thing. I think that's the other problem Twitch has with some of the fitness streamers. Not all of them. But some of the fitness streamers straight up just do this because they enjoy it, and they're not doing it for money. That's who I am. Twitch can't bully me by taking money away because I barely run ads in the first place. 
French Canadian streamer says law for streamers pretty shit at games. Eh. I, don't pay attention to them. Big game Mikey, stoicism, bro. Only focus on what you can control. Continue improving your content and the views will come. You have to believe it that way. May not always may not always happen in the pattern that you expect it to, but just just do your thing and enjoy doing your thing for what it is that you're doing and don't pay attention to the numbers so much. You pay attention to the numbers, it just depresses the shit out of you. Trust me. Bring back the stash redeem. Nah, stash ain't coming back. Because it would take, dude, I, uh, it took the entirety of the pandemic for me to grow that thing out. The only reason I didn't, you know, the only reason I did that in the first place is because I could wear a mask. Uh, well, I was required to wear a mask. And so I'm like, well, might as well grow out the stash while nobody has to look at those horrendous intermediate phases. I know, I was just telling you about the world though. People, it's the same reason junk food, it's the same reason hyper palatable food sells. Hyperpalatable food is the equivalent to cl clickbait, is the equivalent to low cont low effort streaming. Some people just want to eat and process crap. And, and it's your right. You have the freedom to consume crap. But don't be surprised when you get brain rot from looking at brain rot, right? Don't right. Don't be surprised when all of a sudden you find it very difficult to have an intellectual discussion if you do nothing but watch TikTok all day long. If you get TikTok brain, it's very hard to get to, to clean yourself of that. That's a nuclear weapon Hollywood movie that made you cringe out, oh, Jesus Christ. Ooh, that's a. <laughs> I could name a lot of them. Uh, the China Syndrome is perhaps one of the most damaging films to humanity ever released. Uh, Jane Fonda should be deeply ashamed of ever having released that. It was an anti nuclear propaganda film. Uh, released in the late 1970s, right as Three Mile Island happened. It was uh, disgusting. It's not technically nuclear weapons, it's about nuclear power, but unfortunately Hollywood conflates the two anyway. Even though that's not how it works. And hell, a lot of people say, oh, what about radioactive fallout? Right, are we talking about fission versus fusion weapons? A fission weapon, a hydrogen bomb, you're not going to get that much in the way of fallout, but a hydrogen bomb is going to vaporize you. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a hydrogen bomb, that's it, like game over for anyone and anything within the 100, probably about a 100 mile blast radius, depending on how big the bomb is. Uh, H-bombs and like fusion bombs and fission bombs work extraordinarily differently. Unfortunately, due to the, net, the nature of my day job, I can't go into the specifics here, but you can look it up. Um, one of my favorites, just for sheer comedy and the acting I love in it, is uh, Dr. Strangelove, because I don't care who you are, Slim Pickens riding a nuclear bomb as it falls back to Earth is so silly that it's, well, just kind of funny to watch. Like, it, you know, that's, that's one of the most, I think, parody, uh, that's one of the most iconic or parody uh, scenes in all of film. You know, you got Slim Pickens, yeah, you know, he's, uh, he got the cowboy hat. He's literally riding a nuclear weapon <laughs> as though it were a, uh, <laughs> as though it were a, uh, you know, a, a mechanical ball, which is quite funny to me. So anyway, uh, all right. Last set, on this anyway. Let's go. Look.
Hey, Saul, it's good to see you. All right. Next up, we got front squats. Part of me really wants to try 215. Well, I got four sets of this left to do. Give it a shot. Let's see if we can do two, two fifteen. Any comments on the Ukraine Russia conflict as a casual nuclear engineer? Um, Russia's really fucking stupid. Uh, in 2022 to have invaded uh, at the Chernobyl plant. That is of zero tactical significance to anyone and all you're doing is getting your troops in danger. Uh, so, uh, if I were Russia, I would strongly recommend keeping this war conventional. I'll put it that way. Uh, if, you, if you go nuclear in this war, and really the only belligerent capable of doing that is Russia, if Russia goes nuclear in this war, uh, that will end extremely poorly for them. I'll put it that way. That's... For the sake of Russia's own people, the Russian military needs to keep this conventional. That's, uh, you're, you're, you're playing with a fire you can't put out if you, if you go unconventional. But yeah, no. When I watched in 2022, uh... The Russian army entered the Chernobyl exclusion zone and, you know, bu bully the workers at Chernobyl. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you put your own troops at risk like that? I mean, the, the, the level of disregard that shows for your own army is shocking to me. And I guess maybe this shouldn't be from the country who looks back at the Stalin years with nostalgia, but I mean, just... Why would you treat your soldiers like that? Why would you, there, there's no tactical advantage to controlling Chernobyl. Why would you do that? All you're doing is irradiating your own soldiers. And God forbid you shoot a bullet in the wrong place, you've now killed your own platoon there. There's just, there's no tactical advantage to having done that. The other one I'm very concerned about is uh, the Zaporozhia nuclear power plant. Now again, I do believe the Russians are uh, savvy enough to understand uh, that going non-conventional is an extremely bad idea for them. I mean, look, they're... I'm not one of these people who's going to fucking sit here and simp for the Ukrainians. Because I think the idea that the Ukrainians are going to retake Crimea and restore the 1991 borders is ridiculous. And frankly, wouldn't even make Ukraine a stronger country anyway, because Crimea was never majority ethnically Ukrainian. Uh, or at least hasn't been for hundreds and hundreds of years. So trying to retake Crimea is not a tactically intelligent move to make, I don't think. Um... But I will say uh, that let's, let, let's, not, let's not buy into the idea that this is, you know, anything other than a land grab. This is 
an imperial style war. Uh, this is Putin would like to increase the size of the Russian Federation uh, to try and rebuild, if not the Soviet Union, then the Russian Empire, which I get it, you know, Russia's a big country and a proud country who has, over the decades, contributed much to humanity, and the fall of the Soviet Union is seen as a humiliation. And rightfully so, because if you went through the 1990s in Russia, you'd probably be pretty disillusioned with the West as well. I understand that. But my, as a nuclear engineer, my strongest recommendation uh, to the Russians would be keep the fighting conventional, don't do something stupid around the Zaporozhizhia or Chernobyl nuclear plants. If you do, you will strongly regret it. The Ukrainians obviously are not going to do something like that because it's not worth it to them. Yeah, they're going to say, oh, but what about a false flag? Bro, that doesn't change the fact that <laughs> those nuclear plants are on Ukrainian soil, and if they're on Ukrainian soil, they are going, uh, you know, if, if they are destroyed, they're going to irradiate Ukrainian soil. That is not a good thing for Ukraine. So uh, the idea that the Ukrainians would sabotage their own nuclear power plants is so ludicrous as to be nothing more than a propaganda suggestion, and even the most cynical of Russians would know that. They're not gonna do that, that's, that's idiotic. The fact that, right, like the fact that the war is currently in the state that it is, tells me that the Ukrainians are not irrational enough to consider doing something like that. The only ones who make this war non-conventional right now, I'm convinced, are the Russians. I think right now the Russians are smart enough to realize that's a terrible idea. All right. In the long run, um, the other thing I'd be concerned about if I was Russia, the, the, the two things I'd, I'd say if I was on both, depending on both sides, if I'm Russia, I need a succession plan from Vladimir Putin. He's not going to live forever, uh, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of thinking behind that right now. You can't just go with Medvedev, I think, I'm, I'm butchering that. My apologies to any Eastern Europeans watching. I'm not Slavic. Uh, but I don't think you can go back to him because he was more or less a puppet for Putin while Putin was out of office. Uh, as far as if I'm Ukraine, I cut my losses, sue for peace. The Crimea is not going to help you if you get that back. The Donbass might, but being a part of the EU is what you've got you've to go for. Even more so, even more so than being part of NATO. I get why you'd want to be NATO. It gives you security guarantees. I get that. But being part of the EU and having access to the European market for grain exports uh, and for technology imports to modernize your economy the way countries like Poland and Romania and Hungary and Slovakia have all done after the fall of the Cold War, it's, val it's too valuable. You've got to get, if I'm Zelensky, my number one priority is get into the EU at all costs. And that means butcher the corruption if you have to. And yes, uh, <laughs> Ukraine has a corruption problem, to put it mildly. But you've got to do that. The EU is too valuable not to get into in the Ukraine. This is a once in a, once in a nation's lifetime opportunity to do that. The EU is... Frankly, that's the thing. You, you, if, if you're Ukraine, you need to think about winning the peace, not just winning the war. I know that's cynical, um, but that, that's my opinion. Also because, frankly, as an American who's concerned for the fiscal health of our nation, we're spending a lot of money to keep Ukraine afloat. I'm not sure we can continue to do that as the national debt rises and interest rates rise. All right, let me do a set. Strong like ball.
from a moral perspective, Ukraine has the high ground. And here's how I know that. The Russians are importing munitions from North Korea. And if at any point the North Koreans are coming and saying, hey, we side with you on this, you're probably in the wrong. I mean, North Korea is a country that looked at George Orwell's 1984 and said, yes, that's how we want to run our country. So, my opinion there is, uh, you know, there should be a gut check to anybody in the Russian military, anybody in the Russian citizenry, if North Korea, of all states, is aligning with you, that is a morality check right there, and it's one you're failing. I mean, North Korea is probably the worst, if not one of the worst places to live on Earth. So, since the Korean War, is so awful that one wonders if MacArthur didn't have the right idea in 1951. Now that's a hot take, but <laughs> it, begs, it begs the question, you know. All right, that was 215. That was about an RP9. That was really difficult. I'm not going to be able to do that for three more sets, so we're going down to, let's see, 205. Just reinforces. Hey, Sauce, good to see you. Sauce, I thought you were here in the United States. Stanley Proctor, Ron Michael, I deep clean my room, do two ones, or the laundry in a single night. Let's go. So, oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. My sister plays, so I was free. Dude, freedom's for, freedom's a huge deal. Alert because I'm working also. Pop from today, bro. So, bring it. Let's go. Lesbian hot sauce. Let me give you a shout out. Mm. I'm fucking dying on the squat rack today. I uh, hit 330 for eight, which is 150 kilos. But let me give a shout out to the woman, the myth, the legend. It doesn't work as well as the man, the myth, the, myth, the legend. It just doesn't roll off the tongue as cleanly. But uh, lesbian hot sauce who is uh, over there across the pond. So shout out to her. We're doing front squats. Um, this is this is tough. I'm going really slow. Almost as slow as me. Uh, that sounds like a challenge. But now, as, as far as as far as the conflict in Ukraine is concerned, that's that's really my big takeaway point. If I'm Ukraine, do whatever the fuck it takes to get into the EU because that's going to help improve your country immensely. Uh, and if I'm Russia, kind of a gut check when the North Koreans are volunteering to be on your side. That's not a good thing. If, you're, if, you, if you ever find yourself in ideological alignment with North Korea, something has gone wrong. Jokes, jokes, traps are fucking huge. It's funny as I haven't worked my traps at all today. All right. So we got three more sets on this, and then we got lunges. Holy shit. The woman, the wonder, the something. <laughs> yeah, what's, we need the female equivalent to the man, the myth, the legend, you know? Because the woman, the myth, the legend doesn't really feel, it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. It's the same issue I have with people who identify as they, them. As a southerner, it is deeply problematic to me when I can't give you an honorific to the equivalent of sir or ma'am. To the they, them, envy community, I'm trying to be respectful here. Please respect my culture as a southerner uh, and give me an equivalent to sir or ma'am. We mean it in the most respectful way. If you want me to respect your pronouns, sir and ma'am are pronouns, and they are just as important as man or woman in the Deep South. Respect my culture and I'll respect your pronouns. 
So envies, work on that. That's not an unreasonable request. It's look, manners are a fucking huge deal in the deep south. It's uh, if you, I, I was actually talking to a friend about this who lives uh, across the river in Georgia, and they feel <laughs> the exact same way. They're like, we need to do this. We need to fix this. <laughs> it's it's a cultural thing. Right? Y'all is not a grammatical corruption down here. Y'all is the plural form of you, and we all have agreed that that's what y'all means. And when you need, and that's only, y'all is usually like two to five people, and then a group, a much bigger group, is all y'all. And no, I refuse to be told that's grammatically incorrect. I don't care, I'm from the South. This is like, uh, you know, this is like, this is like, it's one of those things where you're just, you're not going to convince a Southerner on this one. Much easier to give us, give us the respectful pronoun that we can call you, but you gotta come up with that shit. That's, if you, if you, if you want the South to get with the times, help us a little bit here. Help us help you. Alright, here we go. They respect the people you talk to, and it's wholesome. There must be something enemies can use. I agree. My liege is a touch too French for me. The right idea. Need to, we need to change it, because like, madame, which is what ma'am is an abbreviation for. Madame, that's French. Ma'am is southern. So maybe we can maybe we can tweak my leash a bit. Look, I know there are enemies that exist in the deep south. Step up here, lead the way. We need to corrupt it in a way that French people would hate, and then the southerners will get aboard it. I think we're gonna have to ask people in Louisiana to do that. They've got two hundred years of experience corrupting the French language, and it's fantastic. Seriously, <laughs> like, it's hilarious. Because I know, uh, if you're from Quebec, and you go over to France, or not, you go over to France, and you start speaking uh, Quebecois French, oh, the French people hate that, because it sounds like you're butchering their language. Um, and that would be funny enough. <laughs> um, But compared to Louisiana Cajun, 
Quebecois or Quebecois French sounds fucking elegant. Uh, Louisiana Cajun is pretty much incomprehensible no matter what language you've learned first. It's fantastic. The funniest part too is not only if you spoke Louisiana Cajun to a French, I don't think they'd understand it. Like, I don't think you might as well be speaking Korean to them uh, or Vietnamese or something. Uh, <laughs> but Louisiana Cajun, the best part, what I love most about Louisiana Cajun is that they've got just enough French in them to be the best cooks in the world. <laughs> There is not, I will, I, I am hard pressed to find a dish better than a properly done crawfish etouffee. Funny complaint to make that has to do with my parents. It's a gleaming disappointment of my family. I think it'd be someone to throw a party or go whore myself out when I'm unsupervised, but no, I clean. Aww. Sam or Mir, that's not bad. That might not be a bad way to go. You parlez un peu de français, mais les français sont dos. Personas grossiers. I, I probably butchered that. I can't speak French for uh, beans. I'm working on Spanish because, frankly, knowing that um, is far more useful useful when talking to uh, Latin American immigrants here. There are a few Brazilians who speak Portuguese, but for the most part, uh, you know, whatever country that's immigrating from south of the border speaks Spanish. So. There is some value to knowing Espanol uh, here in the States. Um, I, I'm nowhere near where I want to be in terms of proficiency, but I'm trying to be better at that this year. Um, if you live in the state of Texas, for sure, uh, learning Spanish is a good idea because if nothing else, you'll, you'll find where to find the really good food quickly. Humanitarian work learning French is good, that's why I try. Yeah, because uh, legacy of French colonialism fucked up most of Africa. <laughs> Uh, that's the best part. I love, I love, love, love it when people crap all over America, like Europeans in particular crap all over America for being an empire, and it's like, let's look back in the history books and see who really did it the worst. Usually British people are smart enough to not pull that card because they know their own history well enough. Um, usually I get that from the really pompous European countries. <clears throat> Sweden. Oh, we're too good for being an empire. We're entirely up our own ass. What were we doing in 1944? Innocent whistling. You know what you were doing. You know exactly damn well what you were doing. I get, I get kind of tired of the Nordics being all up on their high horse. Do you know what? Right. The French, they were fighting. The British, y'all fucking, y'all took the blitz in the mouth and popped the Germans right back. We came over and helped. God only knows the Polish and the Soviets suffered enough. What, what, what were the Nordics doing again? That's right, thumb up ass. There's a reason they called the Danish front the cream puff front in German. Third set, 205. It's around 94 kilo, 93. Gamers Forte, good to see you. Thanks for first time chat. Welcome on in. Half Norwegian, half country. Let's go to the Nazis. Granddad tricking Nazis that'll liberate the country. Well, respect. That's good then. There's a. I know the old saying goes that the war was won with British intelligence, 
American manufacturing than Russian blood. There's a lot of truth to that statement. Fucking spanned by some fucking rando on Snapchat. That's why I hardly fucking use that app. We got one more set of that. Um, we finished off of our pullovers, so once we're done with that, we got four sets of 12 on lunges. I don't think I'm gonna go with Bulgarians after that. I don't think I need to. My knees are already feeling pretty sore, so are my quads. Um, let's go. That'll work. A little dire straits. Actually, I'll be right back, y'all. I gotta piss. Excuse me. I love being a property owner, sometimes. Less fun when you have to do maintenance, more fun when you can pee anywhere you want and say, hey, it's my land, fuck off. Pros and cons, huh? Anyway, uh, by the way, today is Financial Fitness Friday. Uh, the reason I do that is because uh, this is, ooh, that's a good song. Uh, the reason I do it that way is because this is when the stock market is open. Uh, and when I'm streaming, it's the only day of the week where those two uh, cases are both true. So uh, we talk about finance, we talk about savings, investments, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. We were talking about the housing crisis earlier in the stocks channel on my uh, server, and everybody wants to blame BlackRock and Vanguard and the big corporations for driving up housing prices in the U.S. And they certainly haven't helped, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is because the demand for housing has skyrocketed even though there are less people living in every single house than ever. It's because Americans continually demand bigger houses. Bigger houses with the same amount of land will be more expensive. Seriously, the average household size was over three in the 1970s. It's barely over two now. The average household, uh, the average house size has increased from about 1,500 square feet or about 120 square meters to over 2,400 square feet in some states. That's a near doubling. You can figure out what the problem is. It turns out if you only build McMansions, you don't build small affordable houses or even just regular sized affordable houses, uh, it becomes very quickly, it was very difficult, uh, very quickly to get on that housing ladder. All right, now this dude's a draft dodger. At the same time, uh, he mows down feral invasive boars uh, on his property from a helicopter in Texas, and that's just so badass I can't help. Um, this guy famously never took drugs. Uh, it's just 100% mental instability. We gonna play ourselves some Ted Nugent. back and ready to function. Hell yeah, criminal. I work out four months, I don't want to get him supplements, I don't worry about them that she get into. Very few of them, if any. I'll explain that after this set. In the same way that my workouts from the 70s, most of my diet advice is from the 70s as well. Come on, one more set. Strong like pull.
That fucking light there, baby. All right, let's move the lunges. All right, we're at 145. Move to 150 then. Yeah, we got 155 for now. Scratch fever, da da da. All right. Hey, FM, good to see you. Uh, all right. So let's talk about it. Um, lesbians 100%, lesbian hot sauce is 100% on the money there. Yes. You want to have your macro target set up so that you got muscle growth. Um, if you're lifting four or five times a week, I recommend getting roughly your weight in pounds uh, of protein in grams a day. So if you weigh 150 pounds of lean body mass, you know, if you're overweight, this changes things, but take your body weight in lean mass uh, in pounds, and that's roughly how many grams of protein you should get. So for me, I'm about 180, 190 pounds of lean body mass, maybe a little bit less, something around there. I weigh 220, so that seems about right. Right, if I'm 220 pounds and 15% body fat, that means I'm roughly 33 pounds of body fat, so take that off, that's 187 uh, body or pounds. Of lean body mass so that's 187 grams of protein i think that's about right um perhaps not perfect but that's a good minimum now on a bulk you can bump those numbers up i'm going for 250 right now uh because i'm looking for you know i'm looking for putting on weight right now right when i cut i keep the protein level high but i cut down on everything else all right so this is one 55, we're gonna do this for another side here. Do you actually start creatine? Yes, okay, so I do recommend creatine. Um, lesbian hot sauce, give it about two months on creatine before you decide whether or not it's done anything. It's a slow process. Um, if you notice your weight bumps up a little bit, that, that may be why. So, granted right now you just started doing leg day, so you're probably gonna look like an absolute beast two months from now if you stick with it just because you're not used to it. Okay, so it's 47 degrees in here. That's a good, that's about, that's about eight degrees Celsius, something like that. It's nice and warm. I do protein powder, creatine, and sometimes we'll need to boost caffeine. That's it. Um, every so often in the winter time, especially if you live in a more Northern latitude, uh, consider uh, maybe a little vitamin D. Uh, if you are darker skin. They've, they've done studies about this uh, with migrants from the Middle East and Africa uh, and even Latin America that have moved further north to European nations or in the United States or even Canada and they found that a lot of the time they feel very weak, very tired and little. This is cool. <sighs> That's all right. My roommate, my roommate came home a bit too early. Um, thought she could get in here. I'm like, nope. I, I closed the garage door again. Anyway, uh, so they found is uh, immigrants to more northern countries uh, get vitamin D deficiency in the winters, and so they have to take vitamin D pills because they're not getting as much from the sun as they normally would. 
You're all good. I'm just in here right now, and I'm not going to move out for a little while. No, that's fine. I'm good. All right, I'm about to do a set. Come on, two more. Not bad. Three more sets. Taking this off though. I feel like wrapping my wrists over the bar. I'll watch it get in the way. Just losing weight where the macro balance is the same. Um, are you trying to cut? What's your goal, FM? Well, your arms crossed during that exercise. So the front squats, a lot of people like to do it a power clean grip. That hurts my wrists. So instead I like having arms crossed and bracing them that way. My arms are putting very little pressure on the bar. I'm mostly resting the bar on my delts, right? So I got these nice, Nice little caps on my delts here. I rest the bar there. I just use my hands to keep it from falling forward uh, as I do the weight, uh, as I do the rep. Usually I don't put a lot of weight on there or a lot of pressure on there with my hands. I couldn't stand up or sit down for two days. Walking back, good. Look, first commandment of the iron game, thou shalt not skip leg day. Don't be a bitch. Simple as, never bitch out a leg day. People make excuses for doing that. Then you get these tragic looking dudes who have upper bodies like Arnold and chicken legs, and it's so pathetic. It's so sad. You know, them, you know those guys. Predominantly, it is a male thing too. Very seldom do I see women skipping leg day. Uh, women's problem tends to be hitting way too many reps and, and not heavy enough weights. But can you explain macros? I sure can. So macros are, let me go ahead and hang on a second. Uh, macros are short for macronutrients. So in a diet plan, the most important thing you got to figure out is how many calories am I taking in and how many am I burning in a day? Am I cutting? Am I bulking? If I'm cutting, I want to run a caloric deficit. That means I'm eating less than I'm burning. If I'm bulking, I want to eat more than I'm burning. Just losing weight at the moment. The priority right now is reducing how much space my midsection is taking up. So you're on a cut is what that means. You're five, six, you want to get from 190 to 150. So then you're going to want to, if you, uh, FM, are you still lifting? How, how often a, a week are you lifting? So the macros, the four big macronutrients, that's the, the first thing is calories. That's a thermodynamics problem. The biology section is macros. So the four macro, the four macronutrients uh, that are important, micronutrients are your things like vitamins and minerals. Uh, macronutrients are carbs, fat, protein, and alcohol. We're gonna set alcohol off to the side as a special case, um, but the, the, the three you really gotta care about are carbs, fat, and protein. What you need is few enough calories if you wanna cut, Right? You need few enough calories and enough protein to where not only are you losing weight, but the weight you're losing is fat and not muscle. Right? You can eat 1,100 calories a day of Twinkies and lose weight, but you're going to feel like shit and you're going to lose muscle. My goal is to lift three nights a week. So if you're lifting three times a week and you're 5'6", roughly 100, and your target weight's 150, I'd start off at between eh, 15 and 1,700 calories with roughly 150 grams of protein. 
maybe maybe start at 1800 calories go about there for a week or two if you're at 190 pounds and you're only eating 1800 calories you should lose weight fairly quickly um you know you may have to adjust that number down as you get closer to 150 but uh 1800 calories will get you through for at least the first month or two you'll probably get down to 180 170 pretty quick um so i would start there 180 i'd say 1800 calories 17 to 1800 calories is your target um and then 150 grams of protein and then you know try to get your macronutrients and your micronutrients as well which is really just micronutrients is almost always satisfied by eating fruits and vegetables you know what shit has vitamins and minerals for you i don't need to spoon feed that to you um in general all right let's do another set we get we got two more sets or three more sets actually shit fuck god damn it <sighs> youtube trying youtube is advertising fucking hard on pills for me i'm 28 what Look, just because I listen to music from the 70s doesn't mean I'm 65 years old. God damn. The algorithm still has some work to do. Three. I'd say, FM, once you get comfortable with three nights a week, maybe up it to four, and do an upper lower split. Up. Oh. Come on, one more. Oh. Two more sets, baby. So, we got two more sets of that, then we'll do abs. We'll do abs too. Yeah, you can't see a whole lot of ab definition right now. That's my no mistake. Getting that pot belly. My goal for the bulk. Um, I'd like to squat 440, uh, bench 360, and deadlift 500. We'll see if that happens, but I definitely think I got more, at least for deadlift. I know 455 ain't my PR. I know I can do better than that. I always play a conservative with deads. Just not worth anything else. If it doesn't come up easy, I stop. Four more. Three more. Ah, something on my foot.
Yeah, baby. Pan belly would look like as compared to a pot belly. I don't know. A belly that all genders would like. Got him. Tap raises with a barbell makes you feel strong for sure. Um, Gamers Forte, do you have any other questions? While we're recovering for the last set, let's take a quick look at the markets. Put my third set down. Uh, what we got on the markets today? We got a mild red day. Uh, NASDAQ suffering a bit more than the Dow or the S&P, but that's all right. I think there's a little bit too much exuberance in the Santa rally. Uh, the idea that the Fed's gonna cut rates more times than they actually will. So, interesting. Um, really, hang on. Oh, no, my, my data's out of date. That should be a green day, excuse me. Mildly green, but the Dow is leading uh, on the S&P. And uh, Masso, 1238, thank you very much. And the NASDAQ, interesting. So tech stock maybe not quite performing as well uh, as the broader market today. Otherwise, not a particularly high green day. Very mild, just fine. All right. We got one more set left, y'all. It's gonna be reverse lunges. We're gonna hit it for another set of 12. That's gonna be it. Then we're gonna move to uh, we're gonna move to abs. If I have the gas, I'll probably throw on some uh, Bulgarians while we talk finances. All right. Thanks for the follow, Master. Welcome to the bullpen. By the way, what's the viewer count? For whatever reason, my activity feed ain't rolling today, so I have no idea how many people are in the audience. Could be five, could be fifty, for as all as I know. Strong like bull. Last set. Thanks. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Come on, five more. Eight. Nine. Ten. Just cause, that's why.
Yeah, baby. Oh, my abs are on fire now. <sighs> hey, no shot. I ain't got no six pack. Semi visible abs, sure. This ain't no six pack. Here's how I know squishy squish. So I'm gonna do three more sets of abs. Um, yeah, I think, ooh, make me flex some muscle or redeem a pose. My pick. All right, we'll have my pick. Let's go. spread too. I'll give you two for one. Yeah. That's much better. Show off my lats from the front side. Here we go. Ooh, dress day. If I dressed any less, I'd get kicked off a of Twitch. <laughs> what you want me to do? <laughs> you are merciless. Yeah, I might, I might toss in some Bulgarians while we talk about finances and such. It's going to be a three-hour workout. Jesus Christ. What is these Speedo workouts? Do a Speedo and have a kiddie pool. Guys, I'm not a woman who gets 5,000 views on this channel. Twitch will kick me off for that. That's not how that works. Only the biggest of the big streamers can get away with that. I'm not one of them. I'm not fucking Amaranth. All right. Come on, we got abs left. Three sets. For you. Oh. Ah. Sissy. One more, baby. One more. I'm fucking insane for it being like 47, 48 degrees in here and I'm shirtless. But I promise you, I'm red hot right now. I'm very warm. I'm just burning lots and lots uh, of energy for this. I'm just, seriously, I'm radiating heat. If anything, I feel warm in here. Very warm. 
And unless you exercise and you've got a fair amount of muscle volume, you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's real. When you get to a certain level of strength, that level of muscle mass, you get to the point where you're just pouring off heat anytime you do any exercise. And it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in the winter, and it's a curse in the summer. Summer workouts in here when it's 94, 95 degrees is fucking, oh, it's brutal. Because I don't have air conditioning, that's why I have that box fan. Those at least must be on fire, you bet they are. You bet your sweet ass they are. We got one more set though. Give me a kiss and a glass of water if you want to be thirsty. All in favor of bull having an OnlyFans, veto. You can be in favor of it as much as you want, but my day job prevents that. Look, I'm a nuclear engineer, I can't be doing that shit. Everybody wants the spicy content, but wait 481 days, all right? Sir, no, we're not fucking done. I'm gonna do this, Bulgarians. How bad do you want it? Right, this is what I'm talking about. How bad do you actually want the results you claim? I missed. How bad do you really want them? Right, this is an extremely high volume workout based on what the greatest power lifters of the 1970s were doing. If you want to look 70s big, you got to do 70s volume. It's not easy. It's never easy. Nothing worth fucking doing in this life is easy. But that's why you come in here. That's why you grind. That's why you strive to be better. If you quit, you're only letting yourself down. At the end of the day, nobody gives a single solitary fuck about what you're doing because they're too busy focusing on themselves. You gotta pull up and make those decisions and keep kicking ass. Nobody is gonna do it for you. Society's not gonna do it. Society doesn't owe you shit. The government's not gonna do it. The government doesn't owe you shit. Your friends aren't gonna do it. Your friends don't owe you shit. I don't... I'm not gonna do it for you, I don't owe you shit. Only you can choose to make the decision to do better. Only you. I can try to motivate you. I can lead you to the water, but I'm not gonna make you drink, I can't. You have to choose to do it yourself. That means sucking up pain. That means doing without the crap you're addicted to, be it sugar, be it tobacco, be it alcohol, it doesn't fucking matter. You gotta choose to quit. You gotta choose to make a better life choice. Can you owe me a hug instead then? I don't know, you shit. But maybe I'll give you one because I'm feeling charitable. You ever around here, I'll give you a hug. Stop feeling fucking entitled and stop feeling sorry for yourself. Your bad decisions are entirely your own problem. Fix them on your own.
Ah. One down, three to go. This is too high. Need to lower it. Hey, Dodge. What do we need? Uh, what I. What I mean? Did you just say that I'm out here and refill my water? I'm out. Then again, making a dumbass decision. It's my dumbass decision to drink too much of my water too quickly because I'm out. That was it. So, the root beer queen won't be having you in that for a while going flat for 2024. Love to fucking hear it. No, you had a real tough craving for Pib yesterday, Dodge. But you know what? Just made the right fucking decision. You said, I'm not doing that. I don't drink soda in 2022. As a result, your actions followed your decision. You didn't drink the root beer. Thank you. Your action, if you continue to sustain that, will create a habit. All of a sudden, you're going to want soda less. One of the safeties that we're fully in. All right. There you go. Nice point, uh, point that out. So that's going to form her habits, the habit to form her values. And eventually she's going to see drinking soda in the same light as smoking cigarettes. Disgusting. A bad habit to be kicked and never touched again. There's nothing in a soda that is get, it gives you any nutritional value. Nothing. It rots your teeth. Changes your brain chemistry to where you can't appreciate sweetness and more natural things. <sighs> Raises your heart, heart rate and blood pressure. Causes diabetes. It's even been linked to dementia and early onset Alzheimer's. Nothing good comes from drinking soda regularly. So, it's a tough addiction to kick though. And Dodger 100% was an addict. She's making the right fucking decision now. And it's not fucking easy. It's not easy. But nothing in life, worth doing is gonna come easy. It's not how life works. But if you do the hard decisions, they become easier the longer you do them. Because they become habits, and then they become values. And then they become your life's ethos. When your life's ethos is enjoying that grind, enjoying the progress, enjoying the self-improvement, oh, it's nice. Oh, it's fucking nice. All right. Three sets left. Come on. There it is. I could have quit. I could not be doing these right now. But you know what? I'm fighting through it. Come on. Two down, two to go. So you got any questions about financial independence, about savings and investments, about the stock market while we're in here? Hey, Paul, you're approaching 60K channel points. How are you gonna pull off? 69,420. Um, brain's not flowing. Or blood's not flowing to my brain right now. Uh, it's flowing to my quads. Please remind me what redeem is that 69, 420? If it's the hot sauce shot, can I request that you do that on a rest day? Uh, I think that's a reasonable request to make. Uh, the demons of cells are, I've done that before. Um, 
I think I actually have an old clip of this. Um, I'll tell you. I, uh, I, I reenact the, uh, the old filthy Frank joke where uh, I, I'll get a button-down shirt and glasses. Okay, can't reach the remote? Now you can call upon the demons of Selzar. Ah! You know that. Those guys will take care of anything. I never thought someone would actually save up enough channel points to do that. But someone did it once. Um, I request you do that on a rest day as well, please. Uh, just because I'd have to go all the way, like, uh, it would be a massive pain in the ass to do it uh, on, 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 a, on a lifting day. So, you, you can still do it, Solace, uh, but please, for my sake, do it on a rest day. Alright. Do it right. Okay, here's the rule about channel points or games. Like, if I'm about to hit a really heavy squat set, or I'm about to hit a PR on something, I'm not fucking looking at the channel points or games. You guys gotta remember that interacting with my audience is my second priority. Getting a good lift in is my first. We can do a bunch of push-ups sporadically. Honestly, that's fair. You can. Nah. But it's, it's just, you know, don't abuse the channel point system and I will honor every request you, you, you do with it. Like, I will honor every redeem. It's just, you know, if I'm in the heat of hitting a workout, it might be a moment. Come on. You got three, two more sets on this. Jesus Christ. One more. Oh. It's back on. Sam, is it now? Hey, we finally crossed 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You need to hydrate, you got it. Oh. Set, genuine actual last set here. Uh, I'm gonna hit Gonna Fly Now by Bill Conti. Because, I mean, come on. This is a 70s power lifter workout, so why not top it off with a 70s style song? Gonna Fly Now is peak 1976 vibes. Speaking of this, uh, I got a notification. Apparently they released a new equivalent of the range, but I'm gonna have to go look at that and see if it's uh, better than this old thing. I doubt it. Oh. The reason I know that is because I know they're gonna continue making the 9400 rangeman pretty much uh, you know, uh, 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 until time immemorial, just because the tooling's already paid for it. They've been making it for 10 years. Fantastic. 
do more enjoy it than winding someone up and then hitting them with a leaf. Anything further than that is just mean. Aw. Well, I deserve, you know, I deserve a little bit of, you know, it, it's 100% it's within y'all's right to screw with me. And that's fair. It's just, right, if I'm hitting a max set, you know, I may not redeem. Like, if, if you, if you, like, I'll put it this way, right? You can redeem any song you want, and I will play it on my earphones. But if I'm about to hit a max, you know, you request the troll song, like the, the troll of all song, I'm not going to play that until I finish the set. Uh, that, that seems like a fair compromise, right? Or if I'm in the middle of a song, you know, I'm not going to, you get the idea. All right, last set. Got the, we're going for peak 70s energy here. You look like fucking Bill Kazmaier. You look like Doug Young. You look like Roger Estep. You look like the Austrian Oak. You gotta put in the work. Or even look like Sly there. Da da da. Da 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 da. One. Four. Five. Nine. Come on, three more. All right, one leg done. Come on, get up there. jump for one of those yeah honestly the pain is from the back foot um, I try to put as much weight on the driving foot the front foot on those because the back foot's hooked on a metal bar that's why I put my shoes back on because it hurts if you put too much pressure on your back foot due to bounce you're gonna feel it it's gonna hurt like a bitch Gonna fly now, flying high now. Gonna fly, fly so high. Ba -ba -ba. All right. So let's write down what we've had so far. Protein, that's 380 cals, 64 grams protein, seven fat, and 17 carbs. All right. Thank Dodge for getting me this last Christmas. You can have results or excuses, not both. Very true. Let's put the bar back up. Um, so now, Financial Fitness Fridays, y'all. It doesn't seem like y'all have financial questions, uh, but if you do, I can drop some diagrams on my whiteboard and explain uh, any money concepts or questions you've got. So, I grab my pen, I grab my whiteboard, ask away. That was a death book. Now, take, keep track of your macros and your workouts with pencil and with paper. I promise you it's worth it. So, what do I got for the upcoming workouts? Tomorrow we'll have press. Uh, that's gonna be high volume as well. That's gonna be tough. That was a death note from the anime. I ain't no weeb. 
Look, anime is a result of us whacking Hiroshima and Nagasaki a bit too hard. I think that's Japan's twisted joke on the United States is to make way too much of our population weebs. There's nothing wrong with being a weeb, but there are people who take it way the fuck too far and start fucking ju doing jutsus and shit off in the corner. I used to live in Japan, and those, those people are... Right, I was stationed over there, my dad was in the military. The people who are like super into that kind of level of weavery are cringe as hell. Hey, don't be judging us weebs. You bet your ass I'm a judgy weebs. I've actually lived in Japan, have you? See if there's anything going on with uh, fitness. Hey, good friend of mine finally uh, got out of the overweight category of BMI. Uh, someone on uh, on our fitness channel. That's fantastic. Oh, that was nasty. That makes me sad. You can judge. Look. I won't marry a fake digital husband. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with enjoying anime. I, I mostly say that for shit posting reasons, but there are people who take it a little bit too far. Um, where, oh, I agree. BMI, if you lift weights, BMI is kind of dumb, but it's still a, a pretty good achievement. Um, the, you know, if you're on a cut and you get to a different level of BMI, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, technically, I'm close to, uh, I'm overweight according to BMI. So I'm six two or six three, and probably after that squat, after after the squat workout, I'm probably closer to six two. My my weight, like my height, will actually vary. Um, I've measured myself uh, when I get up and uh, when I go to bed, and it's already about half an inch. Uh, it's closer to an inch on days where I squat. It's funny. I mean, you think about it. You got three hundred pounds up here. That is going to slightly compress your spine. That's why I don't like it. I agree. Um, BMI doesn't take into consideration of fat or muscle weight, that's true, uh, but usually uh, most people don't lift. So if you don't lift, BMI works. If you do lift, know what you're, know, you know, just be honest with yourself. Half an inch makes a difference. Ha, huh, funny. A little bit. I stayed in Florida. Muscle Mercy, good to see you. It makes me sad. Nah, I'm, I'm mostly shit posting. I ain't really got a problem with anime people. It's just fun to pick on them. Sai, good to see you. It's funny. I start, I start picking on weaves, and other people who are weaves come out of the woodwork to defend themselves. Maybe I need to do it more often so y'all, so chat is more active. I'm considered obese with BMI, but you lift. Exactly. It's, it's, it's annoying. I agree. The, the truth of the matter is, you know what you are on body fat percentage most of the time. I'm probably below 20, but above 15. That's not obese. I've been losing too much weight from being sick though. Any surprises in the financial side since the year started? It's been pretty quiet to start. Uh, a, lot of, a little bit of the Santa rally of uh, December 2023 seems to be burning off some, which is to be expected because it was based on the idea that the Fed's gonna slash rates over 2024. I think the Fed will probably cut once or twice, but the idea that it's go, we're going to go back to two or lower percent prime rates is, uh, I, would, I would call that a bit delusional uh, on Wall Street's part. Oh, they're stretching out. Oh, I would say it's a bit delusional on Wall Street's part. We're not going to see rates come below about 4% this year, unless the economy hits a recession, in which case uh, <laughs> stocks will take a tumble. So I've not been too surprised. Uh, a little bit of a cool off is coming. It's frankly played to my advantage because I've sold, uh, I sold a call on some of my tech stock holdings. Uh, those calls were deep in the money. By the time December rolled around, they've kind of come back down. We'll see whether or not they uh, go. <laughs> They stay in the money at the, uh, at the expiration date. I'm hoping they don't because Theta Gang thanks you for your services and I like selling FDs to people on Wall Street bets. Um, 
think they're Wall Street's trying to peer pressure the Fed. I mean, not any more than usual. Um, Wall Street will always throw temper tantrums if the Fed doesn't keep rates low. But the, the Fed is smart enough to realize it's not a good move. Uh, Jerome Powell, I think, got browbeat a little bit too much by Donald Trump and has since learned that that's a really bad way to run the Federal Reserve. Uh, Trout, uh, I really, I will say a lot of what caused inflation in 20, uh, 21 and 22, yes, it was the ridiculous government spending uh, due to the COVID pandemic, but also that Trump browbeat the Fed into keeping interest rates way too low in 2018, 2019, and 2020, uh, you know, right before the pandemic. Obviously, right when the pandemic hit, yeah, drop interest rates to zero, if that makes sense. But before that, interest rates should have been much, much higher than they You can say something that I realize my unhinged lack of a filter uh, nowadays might always might not always be appropriate. Fucking go for it, man. Honestly, like we have the the content warnings. This is an 18 plus channel. You can say whatever you want. We can talk about whatever topics y'all want for the most part. Y'all know what Twitch's guidelines are. And you know, anything that you want to say unfiltered, that's what I have my own Discord for. Um, I believe I believe very strongly in free speech, uh, but this is not a public platform. This is owned by a private corporation, so I have to play by, play by the corporation's rules. How the Epstein list affect the stock market? Not at all. Wall Street doesn't give a shit if a couple billionaires go to jail. Not really. They make up such a tiny fraction of the market. It ain't, it ain't gonna mean shit. Um, that being said, I'm very curious to see who all is on that. Did, did it get released? No, I think the Fed, a lot of people love to shit on Jerome Powell and the Fed relentlessly. I think the Fed since 2022 has done quite a good job, actually. Um, I think they kept interest rates at a reasonable rate. You can tell the Fed is doing a good job when the Fed gets equal amounts of criticism for not having rates high enough and also not having rates low enough. When everybody is screaming at the Fed, that means they're doing a good job. So I actually, I would, I would say Jerome Powell has done a better job given the circumstances he's operating under than almost anyone else could have. I'm not a huge fan of the guy, but I think he's done quite a good job really ever since 2022. I think the idea that inflation was going to be transitory was predicated on the idea that Ukraine was not going to get invaded by Russia and cause a global oil shortage and global grain shortage which spurred inflation even higher. Uh, it was a miscalculation for sure. Um, and, you know, the Federal Reserve probably should have been given more advanced information from certain agencies in the United States government about the likelihood of that happening. Because the U.S. government knew what Russia was going to do um, in Ukraine before Russia did it. But I don't think the Fed knew. I think had the Fed known, you would have seen interest rates tick up in 2021. Just my, that's just my my opinion. Um, FM, who would you want to do the job? The job of running the Fed? I think Jerome Powell is doing just fine now. Now that he's, you know, he's learned to ignore what politicians say. I think he listened too much to the Trump administration and paid the price, and now he's doing a pretty decent job. Right, you got to remember, right, the biggest driver of inflation over the last few years has been uncontrolled government spending, fiscal policy. The Federal Reserve does not control fiscal policy. You've got the, the two levers to control inflation in traditional macroeconomic sense. You've got You have two major levers to control inflation. You've got the fiscal policy, which is what the U.S. government taxes versus what the U.S. government spends, and the monetary side, which is what the Federal Reserve sets interest rates at and whether or not it does quali sorry, quantitative easing versus quantitative tightening. Fiscal policy in the United States has been incredibly loose, a.k.a. stimulatory, a.k.a. the U.S. has been running gigantic fucking deficits in its budget. It's not taxing enough, and it's spending too much. Inflation, right, so if you have a, a U.S. government, right, so let's say
if you have a government that spends more than it takes in, it is going to put more dollars into the economy. When you have more dollars into the economy, you are having more dollars chasing the same amount of goods, which means prices go up. Deficits equal inflation. When you run a massive budget deficit, you get inflation all the time, all the time. The only time you should be running huge deficits is if the economy is in a state of depression. In the 1930s, we actually had deflation. In other words, the US dollar was getting stronger versus the same basket of goods year after year after year. Now, people want deflation because in theory, oh, that means my money is going to be more valuable in a year than it was a year ago. Deflation is terrible for the US economy. You don't want deflation because it means consumers will just hold off on all new purchases. Consumers will restrict their spending too much, which means the economy slows down even further and it creates what's called a liquidity trap or a deflationary spiral. That's bad. Uh, that's what happened in the 1930s before we you know, got the New Deal going. In those scenarios where you've got deflation, that's when you want stimulus policy. When the dollar is deflating, you want to run a deficit. On the other hand, when inflation is high, the government needs to raise taxes and lower spending to combat it. This quote unquote Inflation Reduction Act uh, that was passed by Congress, no, that's, that's just bad fiscal policy. That's too much unnecessary spending. The US government doesn't understand or is unwilling to understand, and really I blame Congress for this. I don't blame Trump, I don't blame Biden, because the president does not set fiscal policy. Congress does. I blame Congress for spending far too recklessly over the last really five years. Um, we were running massive deficits in the Trump years before the pandemic. Those deficits were entirely unnecessary. The economy was humming along great, if not even running a bit too hot. Unemployment was almost too low. It was close to 2%. We're still at that really low unemployment rate, actually. Come to, come to talk about that. Unemployment here in South Carolina is well below 3%. That is such a low level that you're going to have, again, too many openings for jobs chasing too few employees, which means wages are going to rise immensely. Well, that sounds great on paper, but when a company has to pay a lot more on wages, it's going to increase its prices. It, it, this, has been, this is basic economics. They're unwilling, otherwise companies like Amazon will be paying taxes. Amazon does pay its taxes. Amazon is also very good at avoiding its taxes. Tax avoidance is entirely legal. Now you can eliminate loopholes and simplify the tax code, but the more you do that, the more special interests you piss off, and the more special interests you piss off, the less likely you get elected. I'm not stating whether or not that's a good thing. It, to me, well, okay, fine, I will state it. It's not, but you have to operate within the current system. Uh, the, the, you know, the people who think, oh, you're gonna have a massive revolution and then everything's gonna be perfect. That's fantasy land. That's operating, that's operating in the realms of delusion. That's not going to happen. There's too much money invested in keeping the system the way it is. So you have to make incremental changes. I believe the current inflation has been caused by fiscal policy first and continued and monetary second. So what do we have here, right? We have low interest rates, also are inflationary. Think about it, right? So what is inflation? Again, inflation is when too many dollars are ch chasing the same amount of goods. When you have inflation, it's because, right, like, let's take that deflation example we were talking about a few minutes ago. When it comes to deflation, again, on paper it sounds great. Your, your money will be worth more tomorrow than it is today. Well, that's fine, but unfortunately, when you say that to a business that says, well, business, well, why would I expand today when I can get more services for the same amount of dollars, the same amount of credit tomorrow? Why would I expand? Why would I take on loans to grow my business and grow the economy? Now you can see maybe why deflation is a bad idea. You don't want deflation. You want slow, controlled, steady inflation. That's why the Fed's target is 2% a year. That's the Goldilocks zone. 
The Fed wants to see reliable, sustained 2% inflation. The Fed has two missions. One, keep inflation around 2%. And two, keep unemployment as low as possible. Traditionally, you have something called the Phillips curve, which states that as inflation rises, unemployment falls, and the converse. Now, there are some macroeconomic events that can cause changes to that. Wars are one of them. Uh, price shocks in certain industries, oil and gas being the big one, is one of them. The oil and gas industry uh, having an immediate price shock due to an uh, oil embargo is what happened in 1973, and that's what spurred what was called stagflation through the rest of the decades. That's why something called the misery index was so high. Ask your parents or grandparents what interest rates were for a house in the 1970s and you will have your jaw hit the floor because the answer was 18%. Yeah, imagine everybody's like, oh, oh, but you know, interest rates are so high on a home now. That's true, but go back and see what they were 50 years ago and it's not gonna seem so bad. Interest rates in 1974 were a lot higher. <sighs> The reason interest rates were so high in the 1970s is because we designed our economy to be addicted to a substance we did not control, that is foreign cheap oil. This was spurred on by the Interstate Highways Act of 1956 and its consequences. You knew what was coming. What we did was we said, let's design our entire transit network based around the automobile and the trucking industry. Oh yeah, let's also subsidize gasoline to the nth degree by keeping gas taxes really low and forcing the taxpayer to build the interstate highway system at taxpayer's expense while taxing railroads far higher. Oh, look at that. All of our goods are now hauled by trucks instead of by trains, which means US oil consumption skyrockets. In the 1960s and early 1970s, your average car had a 350 cubic inch V8 drinking gasoline at 12 miles to the gallon. It's no wonder then that in 1973, when the Arab oil embargo happened, we supported Israel during the Yom Kippur War, the Arab country said, oh, that's an interesting move. What if we shut off your oil supply? All of a sudden, like that, you had gas lines everywhere. You had rationing everywhere. What we did was, that was, again, the reason that we had all the problems in the 70s uh, in terms of inflation was bad government policy most of the time. It was bad government spending in the 50s that created the problems of the, of the 70s. They're unwilling to close the loopholes because it jeopardizes their jobs. That's true. Um, now, you can, you can eat away at them a little bit. Every so often, there comes the political appetite to reform taxes, uh, to cut spending, and to embrace austerity. It's not very often that it happens. You have to have a politician with an actual pair of balls behind them. The one president who I'm going to cite as actually willing to tell Americans to consume less, pay their taxes, and try and be a bit more reasonable with their spending is Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter got absolutely deleted in the 1980 election. There's a reason for that. Americans do not like to hear consume less. Americans like more, always more, never less, only more, 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 more all the time, more now and more forever. That's not sustainable. And for, the good news is if you can figure out how to consume less, America is a fucking paradise for you. If you can figure out how to jack up your savings rate, the American consumer is such a dynamic engine of growth because Americans spend so fucking much that if you are a saver in this country, the world is, you are, you are going to be unbelievably prosperous because you will not, you will always find good investment opportunities. There's a reason people look at America as a safe haven, even today, even with our government spending more money than ever, even with the American consumer spending more than ever, even with all of that, people still pour money in the S&P 500. Why? It's because we have that consumerist drive in this country. We always consume more. But what that means is if you're willing to buy secondhand, if you're willing to live on the trailing edge of technology, if you're willing to live efficiently, if you're willing to live near your workplace, if you're willing to live in a smaller home, you can jack up your savings rate to 50, 60, 70, 80% of your income very easily uh, relative to how you could in the rest of the world due to the lower tax structure in the United States. 
Once you do that, it's only a matter of time. Once you, if you do that and you invest the, you invest the remains into the American economy, into the S and P 500, you'll be shocked at how quickly your money grows. There's a reason I will be a millionaire before I'm 35 years old if I continue to work. And if I don't, I'll be financially independent and able to retire before I'm 30. This is because I've chosen the route of efficiency. Uh, Luna Montanez, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, do we have any other questions about finances, about uh, the economy, uh, about the stock market? Otherwise, we're gonna look to raid someone, I think. Because it is getting past noon. Consume. No, nah, exactly, exactly. Only us in the United States would release a brand new four digit iPhone every year. This, here's a great example. This is a Motorola G5. It's nothing crazy, or not G5, sorry, G8. It's a G8 Power, I think. I bought this phone a couple years ago. This phone was originally manufactured uh, and designed in 2018. This was the peak of a line in 2018. I don't know about you guys, but I think mobile phones were just fine in 2018. They were perfectly good then. And there hasn't been that much innovation in the last five years to justify a purchase price 10 times of this. I bought this for $150. Why would I pay $1,500 for a new iPhone? Your affiliate pitch for me just saved my bacon. I know why. That's why I did it. And here's why I did it. Here, actually, here's the real reason why I did it, Big Game Mikey, because you're actually fucking working hard. Because you're, you're, you're trying to do everything right. You're teaching yourself SQL. You're pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. When I see that in my own life, you're damn fucking right. I'm going to try and help you succeed. This, it, it's too easy. It's too fucking easy to quit and just say, government, help. You're trying to do the right thing. You're, you're trying to fucking, you know, teach yourself new skills, make yourself more marketable. Your, you know, your old job career path dried up due to macroeconomic forces. That sucks. But you're trying, to, you're trying to break into a new field. And at your age, that's not easy. I'm not saying you're old, but like, you know, it's easier to do when you're 22 than when you're 32. And easier to do when you're 32 than you're 42. You get the point. The fact that you're doing it is so fucking impressive. That's what I'm talking about, reinventing yourself. The only thing I use micro USB for charging my friends to use USB-C. I haven't changed my phone since 2018. This is USB-C. It's also got an aux jack. So I have wired, if I want wired headphones, I can do, I can use them. And that's really helpful uh, because I don't have access to Bluetooth technology for the most part when I'm on site. There's a reason I wear this fucking thing. Exactly, here's a great example. How old am I? I'm 28. Here's a great example. Instead of buying a brand new Apple Watch, I have this bad boy. This thing is virtually indestructible. It was originally designed in 2013 and it works fantastic. I don't need a fancy fucking Apple Watch. I don't, that requires charging every 24 hours. The battery will die in three years. The screen is prone to cracking. The heart rate monitor isn't even accurate. If you wanted an accurate one, you'd get a Garmin. Uh, and gives you constant notifications on your wrist to keep you connected at all times to keep you screen addicted. Why the fuck would I want that? No. So, th that's just my point. Reduce your consumption. Consider driving a more efficient car. Uh, you know, look at having roommates. Things like that, you know. Consider, you know, setting the AC at 76 in the summer and, sick, you know, set your heat down to, if you can stomach it, 62 or even less in the winter. Um, for me, I'd pick 55, but 64 is the, the compromise my roommate and I have. I consider 64 to be outstandingly luxurious, and because of my muscle mass, it feels very warm to me. Um, she begs to differ, but the more she lifts, the more she's going to come to see eye to eye uh, with my view on that one. And I can't wait to see it, because that's going to make her feel way better about herself as well. So, uh, I do agree, though. It's getting a bit late. We need to... Uh, we need to probably raid someone here. Who do we got? Ooh, we got Limitless Fitness. Let's go raid her. She's fucking amazing. She's one of these Twitch streamers uh, that advocates for women actually fucking putting on weight instead of doing a million reps with five pounds. And I'd love to see that. So we're gonna go ahead and raid Limitless Fitness here. Oh, so the raid message. 
is bull rush raid. Let me make sure we're. Let's see, oh, I got an eye doctor's appointment today. Ah, no, 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 no. There we go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and raid limitless fitness. There we go. Raid message is bull rush as always. Um, let's see, make sure. Yeah, that's right. She changed her profile pic. I was like, wait a minute, is that right? We got 30 viewers in here. How about that? Well, thank you all very much for coming out. I'll be live again 9 a.m. tomorrow. We're going to do heavy press volume. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be lit. I hope to see you there. And as always, y'all, make good decisions because those good decisions form your actions. Those good actions form your habits. Those good habits form your values. Those good values form an ethos. It can be the guide star through the rough waters of life. Much love, y'all. Come in for the ball hug. Mm, big ball hug. <sighs> Okay. All right, YouTube. Take it easy. Um, my everything hurts like hell right now.